At the Count of Rostri's estate, the women were discussing among themselves what they had heard, that the girl's parents had died in a carriage accident. It was common knowledge that they had not been a loving couple in life, but had met their deaths together. One of the women added that the Count was a hanged man and his wife was too wasteful. But in the end, the girl was left without parents. The women did not understand why she had to suffer such a thing. After all, now the only representative of their Rostri family was a sickly daughter. Suddenly, the girl was left coughing with great force. As suddenly she looked at the handkerchief and noticed traces of blood there, the girl thought that she was doomed. The girl knew that there were many other characters, but she did not understand why she was reborn in the body of this particular character. The main character was reborn as Laria Rose Rostri, a character from the novel Empire's Greatest Deal. The girl liked this cute face, but that's where all the pluses ended. After all, she was destined to die at the age of 21. After a while, the girl was caught by a man who recognized that her parents had died without ever returning the money. The man was angry and assumed that there must have been something of value left here and told the others to search everything. The man didn't realize where all the relatives were if it was a funeral. The man then turned to the little girl and asked her where all the adults had gone. He also asked her to give him the money. The girl was very frightened. But still, she hoped that now there would be a man who would take her away. The man was very angry because the girl could not pay him. The girl knew that in the novella, Laria did not suspect that her days were numbered. In fact, only two people in the world knew about it. One of those people was her mother, the Countess of Rostri. And the other was the Duke of Carradin, Ivan Eckerd who had just at this moment walked into the room. The people immediately stirred and didn't understand what Duke Eckhart had forgotten here. The girl looked at the man and noted that his gait, and even in a black cloak, looked very cool. Duke Eckhart didn't really care only about his possessions, but when his wife died, he turned into a power-hungry psychopath. In the original, he ran his behind-the-scenes games to take control of the imperial family. At first, he wielded a lot of power because of his belated interference in politics. Yet, after a few years, he became the leader of the aristocracy. He even managed to arrange the marriage of his son and an imperial princess. He thought he would achieve his goal by gaining the support of the aristocrats and the imperial family, but the protagonist, Princess Elani, ruined his plans by falling in love with the protagonist instead of his son. The man had gotten this far and yet never achieved the desired goal in the original story. The girl exhaled and remembered that the author had written that he would release a sequel after the financial issues were resolved, but she had been reborn without ever being able to read it. The girl came out of her musings as she noticed the man almost walking towards her. The Duke then turned to the girl and inquired if she had somewhere to go. Barely holding back a cough, the girl admitted that she had no home left at all. Whereupon the Duke asked her if she would like to be his son's wife. Mentally on the girl exulted that the Duke had finally said it. Even though she knew what was going to happen next, she was still a little worried. The girl noticed that the Duke said it so directly and frankly, also without any conditions. Suddenly the man said that Matilda was very close to her mother. The girl thought the name familiar. She remembered that it was the name of his wife, Duchess Eckerd, who had died at the birth of her son. The Duke said that if Matilda were alive, she would surely bring the girl to their home. That was why he had come for her. The girl made a pleased look, but still realized it was a lie. After all, she knew the original story and realized that there was no way that a man who only craved for power would take her for such a sentimental reason. Suddenly, the Duke said that if the girl would marry his son, he would pay all her parents' debts and provide her with a life of prosperity. The girl agreed without a second thought and asked the Duke to take care of her and called him her father. Despite the fact that the girl knew about all his self-serving plans, but now she simply has no other choice because if she is still going to die, it is better to retire in luxury as it was in the novel. Suddenly the Duke frowned and asked the girl why she called him father. The girl felt a little scared and did not expect such a reaction from a minor character. The girl didn't understand how to stand in front of such a creepy main character, and even a villain. Afterwards, she apologized and explained that she said so because they would now become a family. But the man reassured the girl that everything was fine, after which he called together with him. The girl decided to follow Duke Eckhart as it was in the original. On the way to the duchy, the girl reflected on the fact that the man stopped at the imperial palace and issued a marriage certificate. 
after which she officially became Laria Rose Eckard. Although in reality, all this officialdom is a mere formality. Laria thought about how with such a character she should have been a villain and couldn't believe that she had gotten such a frail body. The girl decided that she should have been reborn as a rich and bitchy villainess. After they reached the Duke's house, the maid immediately showed the girl to her chambers. Laria's opinion of her life immediately changed, and she decided that she had never lived so luxuriously. The maid turned to the girl and told her that if she needed anything, she was to let her know. The maid introduced herself by the name Lisa and said it was a pleasure to meet her new mistress. The girl felt uncomfortable with this treatment and asked the maid to just call her by her first name. After that, Lisa decided to leave the girl and asked her to rest properly. Left alone, the girl exhaled and began to reflect on the fact that unfortunately for her, sticking to the original was the only right thing to do. But truth be told, it was hard for her to say that she didn't know about the cure for her illness. It's really just that she can't get it here. The girl has a brother five years older than her named Fred. He is now studying abroad, far away in the East, and for the past few years, it has been impossible to exchange letters because of evil spirits. Fred did not return home until after her death, and there was a moment in the novel when he sobbed before her grave, talking about the cure. The man spoke to the grave and said that the girl's disease was very common on the Eastern continent, and if she ate 10 Oclasia berries every day for five years, there would be no trace of the disease. This means that the girl's disease is not incurable. However, although she has this information, it is not much use. After all, the Oclasia tree is very rare, and it is difficult to store these berries, so it is hard to get them on the market. The girl realized that she would be very lucky if she could eat one or two berries a day. Suddenly, something caught her attention, and she ran to the window and saw a bush with berries. This was just the cure for her illness. The girl went outside and did not understand how this was possible, and decided that it was just the luck of the Godadanka. While the girl went down the stairs, she had already managed to get all out of breath. The girl assumed that it was God's will for her to live a new life, or to radically change the original plot with her help. But the girl decided that whether it was God or the devil, she was still grateful, and plucked one berry from the tree. The girl brought her medicine to her lips and gave thanks for the food. The girl decided to try to live more than 21 years. Three months later, the girl was still just as sick. The maid noticed that her mistress was bleeding again, after which she inquired if everything was all right. Laria, trying to hold back a coughing fit, assured the maid that she was fine and thanked Lisa for her concern. The girl pretended that she was fine and asked her to hurry as the Duke was expecting her. Duke Eckard is bringing Evan home today. He was at the restaurant at the Academy. This is her first meeting with the Duke, unless you count the one at the funeral. Laria had set herself up in advance that there was no way she was going to piss Duke Eckard off. Her husband is a year younger than she is, a minor character of little importance. Evan was sent to the Academy as soon as he turned six. The girl pondered on the way that the Duke was so indifferent even to his own son that it was creepy. It was scary for Laria to even imagine how wild and hurtful it was for Evan. And at the age of 13, he suddenly married a girl he sees for the first time in his life. As a result, the girl's marriage to Evan caused a great stir in aristocratic circles. As Duke Eckard's power began to grow frighteningly, the number of eyes fixed on him and his activities also increased. People believed that Duke Eckard was trying to control the imperial family even through marriage, so they decided that they should nip this in the bud. The girl realized that this was not a good situation for Duke Eckard, who had not built up enough strength to be prepared for such a thing. Therefore, until his son was old enough to marry the princess, he decided to use her to avoid rumors and suspicions. Laria pondered the fact that the fact that her and Evan's mothers were close was just a convenient excuse to take her. After all, the Duke was a man who cared deeply for his deceased wife, saying that this wedding was what the Duchess would have wanted in her lifetime, and he had only concealed his true motives. The girl knew that the Duke knew that she had little time left, which meant that she would die at a convenient time for him. After all, he had overheard her mother's words when she visited his wife's graves. Then there was a bit of a commotion after Evan married her, for then the other nobles breathed a sigh of relief. Taking advantage of the fact that they had let their guard down, the Duke had greatly strengthened his position. 
The girl pondered that in about seven years, the Duke would gain colossal power and would want to keep the Imperial family on a leash through the remarriage of his son Evan to the main character named Alani. But the problem was that this time the girl wouldn't die. She wondered what would happen if she survived by the age of 21. The girl realized that divorce was not allowed under the laws, so she wouldn't even be able to get a divorce. The girl was digging deep into her thoughts and didn't even notice her maid coming up to her. The girl was worried that if she did not die at the right time, the Duke could kill her with his own hands. The maid kept trying to get through to Miss Laria to inquire if she was going out. The girl decided that the main task was not to get caught in the secret treatment of the disease. Still, after some time, the girl approached the Duke, apologizing for her tardiness, to which the man assured her that everything was fine. The girl was scared, but at the same time she realized that she should resemble a sick person as much as possible, so that he would not even doubt that she would die soon. The girl responded by asking the Duke if he was all right. The man noticed that Laria looked much better than when he had last seen her. He had a feeling she had put on a little weight, screaming with fear. She decided that this was a complete failure. Only the man turned back to the carriage when suddenly the girl called out to him and called him father again, thus surprising the man. The Duke asked the girl why she called him that again. Laria explained that if he suddenly didn't like the address, she would stop calling him that that the man did not understand why that would be. After which the girl still gathered courage and asked the Duke if she could go with him. The man was slightly surprised by these words. After that, he asked why she should go with him. The girl understood that she just needed to show him how sick she was by demonstratively coughing. Well, naturally she couldn't say that, so she lied that it was going to rain later, so she would be concerned that the Duke would catch a cold while riding. The men looked at the sky, and realized that there was no smell of rain there, because it was perfectly clear. The girl agreed that it did sound absurd and said that it would probably rain tomorrow. Laria realized that this was a complete failure. Still, she decided to get out of the situation and said that now that they were a family, she wanted to be closer to her new father. In response, the Duke frowned and the girl had already decided that this plan didn't work. But what was her surprise when the man offered her to sit with him in the carriage? Laria decided that this was a success, but still, she was a little scared to ride in the carriage alone with the villain. But the girl realized that it was better than if he noticed that she was getting better. On the way to their destination, they rode in pitch black silence. The girl noticed that the Duke continued to stare at her with that depressing expression on his face. Laria couldn't help but feel this psychological pressure. The girl came to her senses and decided that she needed to show him in time to show him that she was coughing up blood. For now, she just decided to chat with him about the first thing that came to her mind. So the girl pretended like she was excited to see Evan for the first time. Afterward, she asked Duke if Evan knew he was married, to which the man gave a negative answer. Mentally, the girl reproached the Duke for what a wonderful father he was, for not even telling his son that he was getting married. Laria understood that this is the destiny of the weak, namely to obey the strong. Potterjok uses his son as a pawn to gain unlimited power. The girl was sure that he would get rid of her once he realized that it was useless. Laria pretended to hope that Evan would like her at least a little. The girl admitted that she wished she could get along with him, to which the Duke inquired why she wanted it so badly. Laria was stumped by this question, and she didn't even know what to answer. The girl didn't understand why the Duke would care, but decided that it was worth flattering him a little. So she told the Duke that she was sure that he is all in his father because the Duke is so handsome. The Duke replied with a smirk. The girl noticed that still really the corner of his mouth lifted. The girl decided that she was following in the right direction and decided to continue showering compliments. In this, she told the Duke that she wanted to live happily ever after with him and Evan. After that, she guessed the moment and started coughing very hard, causing drops of blood to form on her handkerchief. Mentally, the girl was jubilant that her plan had worked. The man was a little shocked at this picture. The girl noticed his reaction and purposely decided to make the most pitiful face. Suddenly, the Duke asked the girl why she said she wanted to live happily with him and Evan. The man wondered what she meant and how she envisioned that happiness. The girl did not expect such a question, for she thought the Duke would be worried and ask if she was all right. 
The girl thought about it and realized that she didn't say it out of politeness, but because she was scared. Laria began to ponder what is longer than happiness. He was told that it is when there is a joyful reason to celebrate, and when in difficult times they comfort each other, if there will be something funny they laugh together and also take care of each other. The girl explained that such little things are happiness for her. The girl had no family in her previous life, and she had never talked to anyone about it. So the girl blurted out the first thing that came to her mind. But having said all that, she feels strange. Laria assumed it was because she really wanted it. The man listened to the girl and asked if there were similar little things in Rostri County. The girl hesitated and confessed that such a thing had never happened in her family. After all, her father, the Earl of Rostri, was a hustler and was rarely at home. And her older brother had been exiled to the Eastern Continent under the pretext of studying abroad just because he had crossed his father. Laria confessed to the Duke that they didn't live like that because her father was always away, so she wanted to live differently with her new family. The girl explained that when she had first met the Duke, she had wanted to impress him. Laria admitted that she didn't know what would have happened to her if it wasn't for him, and called the Duke her savior. After which she promised to do everything in her power. The man didn't answer anything, just took a handkerchief out of his pocket and handed it to the girl. Then he explained that she could not vomit on her already dirty handkerchief stained with blood again because it would be disgusting. The girl decided that the Duke thought that other people's blood was dirty, but she thanked her father anyway. Laria realized that there was nothing to be done because then the best way to show the Duke that she was sick. So she agreed to use it and thanked her father. But the man did not understand why so much joy and gratitude because it was just a handkerchief. And yet the girl was glad for her father had never given her anything. The man was slightly surprised to hear this. Upon arrival, the girl got out of the carriage and began to look around. After that, she noticed the very academy for basic knowledge from which Evan was graduating. It was also smaller than the girl had imagined it to be. Laria thought about the fact that children from rich and powerful families were usually homeschooled. Suddenly, something caught the man's attention, whereupon he asked the coachman to linger and also told him that when he returned to the manor, he should order a hundred handkerchiefs of the highest quality. The girl was a little surprised when she heard this. She figured it was because she was vomiting blood more and more often. Evan Reno Eckard was the only son of Duke Eckard. He is a very handsome guy, like his father. Growing up without his father's attention, Evan became a soulless doll. When his first wife died, he didn't shed a single tear. He didn't have a normal marriage even with the princesses his father found for him, because sooner or later they all began to openly cheat on him. The girl was aware of this, for she had read the original story. But Princess Eleni was a rather prominent person who drove a divorce law to divorce her husband. In the end, Eleni forced the villain to massacre the enemy and then escaped with the protagonist. The girl reflected that if she had known she would become a member of the Eckhart family, she would have read the book much more carefully. Suddenly, she was taken out of her thoughts by the appearance of Evan. The girl looked at the young man, did not understand how this teenager can be Evan Reno Eckard, that the boy has an exact copy of his father. The young man's attention was drawn to the girl, and he asked his father who she was. The man explained without any explanation that his wife was standing in front of him. The girl was shocked when she heard this and didn't understand who would even accept this fact without explanation. But Evan calmly replied that he understood everything. The girl did not expect such a reaction at all, after which the young man approached his future wife. Laria did not expect that he was so tall because he was a year younger than her. The girl also noted that he was handsome, but did not give the impression of a good man and also looked older than his age. The girl assured herself that there is no need to be sad because they say that a person who looks older than his years in childhood will later look younger than his peers when he grows up. After which, she introduced herself with the name Laria Rose Rostri, and also congratulated Evan on graduating from the academy. The young man was slightly surprised, but did not show it at all. Therefore, the girl decided that he was completely without emotion. Laria realized that, of course, she did not expect any emotions from a man who did not care whether his wife died or had an affair with someone. Suddenly, the Duke entered the conversation and said that he had received a letter from Evan's teacher two months ago, after which he asked his son why he fought with Viscount Jerdy's son. The girl didn't expect at all that a young man like Evan was capable of fighting. 
The Duke then added that he had been bedridden for three whole weeks because of his injuries. Evan explained that he had lied to him because he had called him a friend and then cussed and slandered him behind his back. That's why he was hit and didn't want to be a friend to a man like that. The young man then confessed that he hated liars and especially those who pretended to be his friend. The girl was surprised that Evan was upset for she had made up her mind that he hated no one and did not care about the opinion of others to which the Duke calmly accepted this information. Laria was surprised by this reaction, for his son is upset and he is not angry at all, after which the Duke added that a child who takes friendship lightly should be punished. The girl thought that she was really facing a first-class villain. The Duke replied that he understood, but told his son and the girl to be friends nevertheless. The Duke told his son that she wanted them to get along and also wanted them to take care of each other. The girl didn't expect to hear that at all and didn't understand what her father was gushing about. At this time, Laria thought about the fact that if she did not try to get along with him now, she would not survive at all. After all, she was a person who hid her true thoughts and was also a person who took friendship lightly. She realized that if she ever got hit and was headed for at least three months, after which she decided that was unacceptable and offered Evan to get along after which she approached the young man and told him that he had no idea how much she wanted to get to know him, after which she suggested that they grow up together and become a loving couple. The young man was a little surprised at this kind of pressure from the girl, after which he still awkwardly agreed. When the acquaintance was over, the Duke told Laria and Evan to get into the carriage. Suddenly, the girl noticed that Evan's neck was slightly reddened at the back of his neck. The girl assumed it was a good sign, the young man was embarrassed. Upon arriving at the castle, the Duke turned to the girl and said it was getting late and told her to go to her room and rest. And I told him, well, I told him they needed to have a little talk. Laria turned around and started to walk away as she was suddenly attacked by coughing again. This did not go unnoticed by Evan. Hiding from the sight of the Duke and his son, the girl ran with all her legs to the fruit of Ecclesia. The girl remembered that she hadn't eaten them at all today. She also noticed that as soon as she started eating them, she felt much better. Laria realized that at this rate, she would be completely cured in five years. Still, she decided that this was the best place for her recovery. The girl ate and pondered on the fact that she had to make it through somehow, after which she decided to first outline a plan. Plan A was that she needed to somehow survive here, secretly save up a lot of money, and then take off, saying Aravidercha to the boys. Laria thought that was in theory a neat and safe but very long plan. Plan B was for her to stay with them after all. After all, it was better to live quietly and peacefully than to try to take over the imperial family. But if she didn't live up to their expectations, they would most likely hate her. The girl thought they would take away her liver or gallbladder. Even though she's in a family of murky types, when he offered to pay off all her debts at the funeral, he was like a savior. The girl thought it would be easier if she gave Duke Eckhart what he wanted, but the problem is that she has no way of ferreting out his true motives, therefore decided that Plan B was too risky. Laria believed that if her charisma failed to change his mind, he would not forget his goals and their lives would be in danger. The girl realized that this is a game of chance, the bet in which the bet is her life. Therefore, one must be careful. After that, she decided to follow plan A and secretly save up money and make a furor. After all this thinking, the girl went back to her room, but she was pinned down by a stack of books on the table. The girl decided that now that her husband was here, they wanted her to study, because for a while she had just been idle. The girl opened one of the books, began to read. Suddenly she thought about the fact that if her mom was here, she would read her fairy tales until she fell asleep. And when she did something good, she would stroke her head, and they would share each other's favorite foods. After a few seconds, the girl realized that it wasn't a book at all, but a diary. But she didn't understand why Evan's personal belongings were in her room and thought something was wrong here. Laria laid down on her bed after a hard day and began to think about the fact that even if Evan didn't look his age, but he was still a child longing for love. After all, he was also not indifferent to those around him from the beginning. And on ordinary days, nothing bothers him, but on holidays, he gets very lonely. In addition, the girl remembered that in her past life, she also wanted love very badly. 
Suddenly, someone entered the room, and the girl thought it was her maid Lisa, after which she said that she should have knocked before entering. Then she asked why there were a lot of books in her room. But what was the girl's surprise when she saw not the maid, but Evan himself? The young man explained to his future wife that he did not need to knock to enter his room. The girl did not expect such a turn of events at all. And he also realized that all this time, Laria thought she was in her own room, but it actually belonged to Evan. Laria realized that she didn't even suspect it, because the closet was half empty, and the bookshelf was also almost empty. That said, the girl realized that she wasn't at all ready to share a room with a man, but Evan said that they were a couple, so they should live in the same room. The young man then turned to the girl and said that they should discuss something. Evan explained that even if they would sleep in the same bed, he didn't want children yet. The girl didn't expect such a thing, or even that Evan would even bring up such a topic. After all, the young man believed that they had to become adults first if they wanted to take full responsibility for a child. The girl decided that the young man had lost his mind. Afterward, Evan put Laria to the fact that they would not hold hands in bed. The girl was a little surprised to hear that, after which the young man explained that if they slept holding hands after the wedding, they would have a baby. The young man admitted that he too was a bit shocked when he first heard this, but decided that they were growing up after all. Laria did not understand at all how Evan could say such absurdity with such a serious look. After that, the girl realized that she was ready to share a room with Evan. The young man admitted that he was glad that they had come to an agreement. After that, he told the girl to go wash up and go to bed, because now she was not the only one in the room. The girl agreed, but she still felt a little awkward about the diary entry. Laria watched the young man and realized that he was still in thought. Then she turned her attention to the book he was reading and noticed that even at a glance it was clear that it was very hard to understand. After she inadvertently looked into his diary, she wanted to really get along with him because she told herself she would be fine. The girl then turned to the young man and noticed that he had just graduated from the academy today and was studying again. The girl thought that was very commendable, after which she stroked his head. Laria noted that even though he was younger than her, but very capable. Such an action on the part of the girl embarrassed the young man. The next day, the girl brought him a small piece of cake, but the young man confessed that he did not like sweets at all. However, Laria knew he was lying, for his voices brightened when she brought him cakes. The girl decided that she would not offer twice and said that if he did not like it, it could not be helped, and she would eat it herself. The girl thought about the fact that the time she stroked his head, there was no reaction either. Laria noticed that Evan was kind of aloof. Suddenly, the girl's attention was caught by the newspaper in the young man's hands and one of the articles. The young man noticed the girl's reaction and asked what was wrong. Laria noticed that the article was talking about the 500th anniversary of the horse race. After all, this was the event in which Seymour, specifically the male protagonist of the novel, appeared. The girl was aware that he had won a large sum of money at this horse race. Laria reflected that she should get there no matter what. Although the girl realized that Evan's marriage to the princess was still seven years away, but she couldn't miss such an opportunity to make money. Laria decided that after she saved up the money, she would go somewhere to be reported missing. After all, if she disappeared, Evans could marry the princess, and she would spend the money quietly and live happily ever after. The girl was brought out of her musings by Evans' voice, who asked if she wanted to go, because she was looking very closely at this article. The girl realized that she was staring too noticeably at the article, after which she confessed that she had such a desire, for she thought it would be interesting, after which asked her future husband if he could go. Evan admitted that since she wanted to, she could go and no one would stop her, and added that they would start in two days. The girl rejoiced and asked Evan if just the fact that she would alert the nanny or the butler was enough. She also asked if she should bring a maid with her. The girl made a pitying face at having to bid alone, for she thought it would be nice if she didn't go alone. Evan said that he really hasn't had much to do lately. Then he added that horse racing is one of the pastimes of the aristocracy. So it would be nice to have some fun too. Besides, the young man confessed that he is not stressed by crowded places, 
The young man confessed that he even knows a thing or two about horses. Mentally, the girl exulted that the young man still wanted to go along with her. But she didn't understand what he was going around about. But she still decided that it was because he had grown up without love, and now he couldn't show feelings. The girl realized that even if Evan went, she could still make money. After that, she directly asked the young man if he wanted to keep her company. The girl read the book and remembered how Evan had informed her that he had told the butler to prepare the carriage for departure on the appointed day, and also informing her that they should arrive on time. Since Evan would completely sort it out, she just had to wait. And having said that, the young man went to study in the library, and after all, he had only recently returned from the academy. So the girl decided to read a book out of boredom, now she understood why Laria and Evan couldn't become a good couple. Suddenly, there was a knock on the door, and the girl invited her maid to come in. Laria inquired from the girl what was wrong. The maid announced that the things ordered by the Duke had arrived. The girl was a little surprised by this news, because she had not asked her father for anything. Suddenly, she remembered about that very order for a huge number of handkerchiefs. The girl looked at the pieces of cloth, and she became sad, because she would like to turn them into money. After all, their appearance only screams of big money. The girl realized that because of these handkerchiefs, she had to cough up blood, but still, she was still grateful to her father. After that, she decided to thank him somehow. After that, she turned to the maid Lisa and said that she wanted to thank her father, so she asked her to bring a card. At this time, the Duke was sitting in his study as suddenly Laria entered, after which he invited the girl to come in. Laria entered the room, asked the Duke if Leon was busy, but the man gave an affirmative answer. The man explained that if he wanted to take a day off at such a busy time, it was necessary to deal with the accumulated documents in advance. The girl was a little surprised to hear about the day off, and she wondered where he was going. But after a while, she came to her senses, because the business of adults has nothing to do with her. So the girl decided to change the subject and said that she received the handkerchiefs he ordered her and also thanked the Duke. So the girl wanted to thank him, after which she held out a small card. The man took the leaf in his hands and inquired what it was. The girl explained that she had put all her soul into this card. The man began to read as suddenly something shocked him. The man was surprised to see that she had drawn three children there. The girl immediately explained that it was actually Duke, Evan, and her. She wanted to draw three little people who get along well with each other. Because the card was blank, the girl decided to draw a picture, but was upset because it was so ugly. The girl assumed that the Duke was now in a bad mood because of this. The girl apologized to the Duke. Suddenly, the man came to his senses and asked the girl if there was anything else she wanted to say to him. The man assumed that the girl was not herself and inquired what was wrong with her. Laria didn't expect such a question at all, and couldn't believe that the Duke was seriously angry with her because of the drawing. The girl was so confused that she didn't even know what to say. After that, she apologized to the Duke and promised that she would not draw again. Suddenly, the Duke again drew attention to the drawing of the three of them and asked her if she would like to go on a picnic together, as she had recently suggested it. The Duke did not expect her to take her words so lightly, the girl was surprised and assumed that the Duke was taking the day off just because of that. The girl immediately began to explain that she had forgotten because she was dizzy and a little nauseous. She also added that she actually had something else to tell the Duke, namely that she and Evan are going to the horse races in two days and she wants the Duke to go with them. But because the Duke is busy, there's nothing she can do about it. Inquiring if he would like to go along with them, the man exhaled and accepted Laria's offer. The man also explained that he had no interest in horse racing, but if a sick child asked him to, he would go. The girl was excited when she heard this and also added that she was looking forward to the day. The man in response only remarked that she was very noisy. The girl only wanted to explain how the glitch had come upon her with a violent cough, but Laria was glad as it came out just in time, after which she informed that she had to go. The girl realized that she had to leave before the Duke realized that the amount of blood had decreased. At this time, Evan was heading somewhere and thinking about how he really had nothing to do lately. And after all, he thought he knew how to talk normally. The young man thought he was a real idiot and didn't understand why he even said that. 
he thought that he should have said that he wanted to go with her, and he only knew how to ride. But he's a total zero at betting. And he also worried that if the girl found out about it, she will be disappointed. Because he said that he cannot stand lies, but the only liar here is him. He was afraid that the girl would think he was a hypocrite and a liar, and would say that she didn't want to talk to him anymore. But Evan hoped that it would not come to that, and then he went into one of the rooms. The young man decided that the only way out was to turn lies into truth. After that, he began to study books, because there are written the basic knowledge about horse racing, the history of horse racing and breeds of horses, as well as understanding of horses and hippology. The young man decided that he must learn all this in two days, whereupon he opened one of the books and began to read. On the appointed day, the young man realized that because of reading at night, he had not slept a wink, so he was very sleepy the whole way. But he was distracted from his sleep by a girl who informed him that they had arrived at the Hippodrome. Then she took the young man by the hand and whispered in his ear that he should not worry, because no matter how many times they held hands, they would not have children. After hearing this, the young man's face became flushed, for he was uncomfortable because she was too close to him. Stepping out of the carriage, the family began to explore the racetrack. Evan drew the girl's attention to Orobos' horse and noted that he looked wonderful. The young man said that he had heard that his legs were longer and stronger than the other horses. After that, he began to talk about horses again. The Duke was a little surprised that his son had only knowledge on the subject and asked if he had studied horses at the academy. The girl thought about it and remembered that the original story didn't mention Evan's love of horses, but now it was obvious how much he adored them. The girl assumed that was why he really wanted to visit the horse races. Suddenly, an elderly man ran up to Duke Eckhard. He didn't expect the Duke to arrive sooner than he thought. After which, the elderly man greeted Evan and also told him that he had heard about his marriage. The man introduced himself as a racetrack manager named Ordi Satabar. The girl noticed the man's reaction and realized that the Duke's status was no joke at all, because as soon as he arrived, the manager immediately came out and greeted him. The man added that he had learned that the Duke would not be arriving alone, so he had prepared the best seats for them. Evan entered the conversation and thanked the manager for his concern and introduced himself by his name and then introduced his wife, Laria Rose Eckerd. The girl greeted the manager as well. The man said that it had been a long time since he had seen such a lovely couple and also added that he was honored to meet them all. The girl came to her senses and realized that this was her first time going out in public with her family. But even though they don't really get along with each other, others think they are the perfect family. And that was something the girl was happy about. The manager escorted the Eckhard family out and, on the way, asked if they knew much about horse racing and also explained that it was not enough to enjoy the spectacle, for they would enjoy it even more if they placed bets. But the Duke said bluntly that he was not at all interested in such things, and added that he was merely accompanying his sister-in-law. The steward asked Eckerd Jr. for his opinion, and he said confidently that he thought it would be better to bet on Berto Arabos and Khalid. The manager was a little surprised to hear this. The man remarked that Evan really knew a lot about horses, for not every man would make such a bet. At this time, a man was watching them. The man asked his attendant if this child was really Evan Eckerd's wife, to which the attendant gave the guild leader a positive answer, and also said that she was the daughter of a Rostry couple who had passed away not too long ago. The man thought this was strange. The guild head thought about the fact that the Count and his wife had passed away in an accident and left their daughter with nothing. As a result, the Duke planned to take care of his wife's friend's daughter by making her his daughter-in-law. The man petted the cat and came to the conclusion that a man like Duke Eckerd would not succumb to such sentimental principles. After all, Evan's engagement would have helped control the forces of the opposing faction of aristocrats, but he was using his son in such an ineffective way. The man realized that there must be a reason for it after which he decided that he should follow up to see what the Duke was up to and get to know Laria Rose Eckard better. After which he saw his attendant from that moment on keep an eye on this girl and report everything to him. Suddenly the girl felt as if a chill went down her spine. The young man noticed the girl's behavior and asked if she was all right. The girl answered in the affirmative and assured him that she was fine. At that time, a boy appeared who was handing out tickets to everyone, 
The girl noticed him and asked Evan if he could lend her some money. The young man was slightly surprised to hear that the girl didn't take the money. Laria explained that she also wanted to bet for fun, so she asked if he could lend her some and promised that she would definitely pay him back later. The Duke entered the conversation and said that he assumed that the butler wasn't giving her money because she still wasn't an adult. Laria couldn't disagree with that. The girl explained that of course she was fine with everything, but the fact that she didn't have any money made her a little upset. The man then took out a gold coin from his pocket and gave it to the girl. Laria was surprised that the Duke gave her such a large amount of money, but the man didn't think it was very much, and also added that the coin was payment for her drawing on the card. The girl was glad when she heard this, for she thought that the Duke liked her drawing after all, and then she thanked him. Evan entered the conversation and promised his wife to speak to the butler about allocating pocket money for her. But even though she is not yet of age, her last name is still Eckard, so the young man thinks she should still have some for small expenses. The man turned to the girl and said that if she needed money, she would just have to draw something. Laria realized that this meant that the Duke would pay her for the scribble she drew. After a while, a boy approached them and held out the tickets, asking if they would like to place a bet. The girl agreed, and then held out the gold coins and added that she was going to bet everything. Evan was surprised to hear that the girl was going to bet all the money at once, because he thought that betting the whole amount on one horse was a bit risky. The girl understood that, but she still wanted to do exactly that. The Duke also pointed out that the girl was careless when spending other people's money. The girl was a little upset when she heard that, but still didn't let it show, hoping that the Duke was joking. Mentally, the girl agreed with her father, but decided to bet that she would snap up a huge score. After that, the race began. Laria remembered that the protagonist of the novel called The Greatest Deal of the Empire Just Loves Money, and also his name is Seymour Gold Letitia. He had a lot of money, but he was not a nobleman by birth. The man buried himself in work, trying to transform himself from a commoner to a nobleman, and the first place he earned his money was the racetrack. Mentally, the girl apologized to Seymour and informed him that he would now have to share with her. Just as suddenly, the girl was brought out of her musing by Evan's voice, who wanted her to pay attention to something. It ended up being that the horse she had bet on came in first. The rest of the people present were shocked. The black horse didn't even have any experience. Many were surprised that anyone had bet on it at all. They then announced the amount of the winnings as 68,000. When the manager heard this figure, his eyes became the size of five kopecks. The man explained that this was the first time anyone had ever won such a large amount of money. The man also added that even though it was an unexpected turn of events, but there were two people who bet on this horse. The Duke was slightly surprised to hear this and inquired who the second person was. The manager told him that it was a simple guy who was only 18 years old. The girl realized that the reference was to Seymour. She suggested that perhaps he was uncomfortable sharing the prize money. The girl thought she was a real rascal. The manager said that all the newspapers would probably write about such an event tomorrow and suggested that the girl's name and picture would appear in the headlines. The manager explained that since it was a very impressive sum, he would write her a check for 34 gold pieces. The girl asked the manager to wait and whispered something in his ear. The man agreed and handed the girl an envelope in return, and she thanked him. The girl then returned to her family, and Evan asked her what had happened. After that, satisfied, Laria handed her father a gold coin, and also said that it was all thanks to him. The girl thanked the Duke for the lucky gold coin and told him that she was returning it and hoped that he would be lucky too. Hearing this, a small smirk played on the man's face. The girl was sure she hadn't imagined it at all, and the Duke did indeed smile. The manager noticed that the lady was not only bright, but also very caring. The man also heard that the Duke had accepted her as his daughter-in-law. The man explained that her mother and his wife were very friendly. The steward noted that it must not have been easy to marry these children. Still, he thought it was very honorable and noted that the Duke was different. Laria watched the whole thing and noticed how the steward casually flattered the Duke and also noted that his skills were really quite good but it wasn't strange since he is the manager of the racetrack. Suddenly, the manager turned to the girl and asked if she was already used to her new family. 
Laria tuned into the conversation, for the manager is not the only one who knows how to chirp sweetly. After that, she assured the man that everything in her life is great now. The girl confessed that she is very proud to be here with the Eckards. To be honest, the girl said that she was more happy to be part of Duke Eckard's family than she was to have won. In response, the man said that if he were Laria, he would be her opinion too, for Duke Eckard is the best. The manager also said that the Duke has a great sense of humor, so they will definitely live soul to soul. The girl was slightly surprised when the man said about the sense of humor and decided that it was too far from the truth, as suddenly the Duke himself admitted that he never jokes with his loved ones. The manager got worried and decided to turn the topic to everyone having private time and asked the Duke why not show his sense of humor. Whereupon the Duke said that to have a good joke, you have to stomp around rather than talk. Actually, the Duke meant try. He just decided to use a pun that unfortunately no one understood. Laria wondered, no longer quite sure what was going on here at all. Suddenly the silence stopped after the manager broke into a huge laughter. The girl realized that she had lost and she shouldn't have been so confident. Evan entered the conversation and said that jokes are jokes, but such teasing is not acceptable in the manner. The girl didn't understand why, for she thought it was very funny. The girl asked her father to make jokes like that more often. Only the girl wanted to say the next sentence, as suddenly felt that she was about to cough. Laria was worried, because if the rumor spreads that she is sick, then everything will be very deplorable, so she decided that she cannot cough now. Then she covered her mouth with a handkerchief and ran away. When the girl arrived home, and she was immediately met by the maid Lisa, who had heard that her miss had won a huge sum. The girl decided to keep the conversation going and said that she was very lucky, whereupon the maid congratulated her on her victory. The maid realized that her miss must have been tired for the day, whereupon she volunteered to help her. The girl was braiding her miss's hair as she suddenly said that even if only for the headlines she would appear in the papers, she thought it was a great relief, for then it was Lisa who had helped her dress up. Laria said that Evan was wearing a red tie, so everyone said that red suited her, and everyone thought that they were a cute young couple. Maid Lisa noted that Mr. Evan's eyes were also red, and thought that they were directly made for each other. Maid Lisa turned to her mistress and promised that she would tell the butler to increase the budget a bit because they just had to order her a beautiful new dress. Laria thought that Lisa was really pretty and very elegant and also skilled in many things. The girl had heard people say that she had been working in the Duke's mansion since she was a child. Laria thought that Lisa was a wonderful maid. Suddenly the maid wondered what the mistress was going to spend all that money on. Suddenly the girl thought that Lisa might be a spy for the Duke so she decided that she should be careful. After which she explained that she didn't know what to spend it on yet, since it was easy money. But still, she decided that she should invest it in something useful. The girl admitted that she would think about donating it. The maid Lisa was surprised to hear this and asked the girl where she wanted to donate it. Laria laid down her dress and explained that perhaps she would give the money to the orphans. Maid Lisa remarked that Miss was very good-natured. Laria consoled herself that she too was a sick orphan, so she was not exactly collected. Suddenly, Maid Lisa revealed that Madame Mathilde was also a bright person. Laria realized that Lisa was talking about the deceased Duchess. The maid revealed that Mathilde had made many donations, and she had a very kind heart. The girl also added that the grave was also lucky, so she shared it with others. Lisa thought that she and Miss were very similar. But Laria, on the other hand, thought that they were completely different. Suddenly, the maid said that if Madame Mathilde was alive, she would definitely love Laria. Then the girl asked the maid if she really thought so. To which the girl gave positive answers and explained that the atmosphere in the mansion by the Dukes of Madame Mathilde now is not like that at all. Suddenly, the maid noticed that the young gentleman was here. The girl was surprised as she told Evan not to come in here because she was changing her clothes. The maid's mood immediately changed, for she remembered that she should not have mentioned the late Duchess in front of him, after which she apologized. Laria approached the young man and noticed that he was reading again. The girl turned her attention to the book and noticed that it looked complicated and noted that the young man was very gifted since he understood it. Evan explained that he had been reading similar books since birth, so it was nothing unusual. The girl decided that then she had no reason to praise him anymore and turned around to leave. 
Still overpowered, the young man said that he didn't mind her praising him at all. The girl kept remarking that he was cute. The girl realized that instead of being cold-blooded, he was only pretending, hiding his desire for love. But to her it was no wonder, for he lives peacefully in the mansion where everyone misses Madame Mathilde. When the girl was eating her fruits of Oclasia, she noticed that the maids were only discussing the time when Madame Mathilde was still alive and thought that it was really beautiful. The girl realized that the only one who could comfort Evan was Duke Eckerd, but he was immersed in his work, so Evan was abandoned. To this, the girl could understand him. Laria decided that even if they remained a couple who had no feelings for each other, she would treat Evan well because she had a soft spot for such children. The girl walks up to the young man and says that not only the book, but the horse race today was incredible. Still, she thinks Evan is better 19 times better. Laria admitted that she was just lucky, but he could really surprise her with his knowledge, after which she said that Evan was really amazing. Laria also added that it was really amazing to go out together and watch people's admiring gazes. The girl admitted that she would like to get together like this more often. The girl woke up and saw that Evan was going somewhere. She asked Evan where he wanted to go, and then he admitted that he was going to the library. The girl was surprised that the boy was going to the library at such an early hour and asked him to come back soon. Then she turned over to the other side and fell asleep again. On the way, the young man began to think about the fact that they were only one year apart and she was treating him like a child. It made him laugh because of the fact that the girl claims to be 14, but she doesn't know where babies come from. Suddenly, the young man met someone on the way. It was a butler named Morand. Evan noted that the butler was just in time, for he had something to ask. So, he asked the man to order him a red tie. The man inquired as to how much he needed. Still, it seemed strange to the butler, for Evan never cares about clothes. The young man explained that he needed one of each shade, and suggested that the number varied around a hundred. The man was slightly surprised to hear this, whereupon Evan turned around and indicated that he would go to the library. At this time, the girl sat outside and looked at her check satisfied that she was able to get so much money. The girl agreed that money really brings happiness, because money makes the world a better place, and this fact makes her want to live large. The girl wanted a fancy house for herself, as well as a first-class chef. She wished for a life in which she would not lift a finger. The girl realized that in order to realize her plan, she would need a lot more money. And the problem was that she couldn't move around without being noticed. Laria was thinking that she needed someone to do some work for her. Suddenly, a duke appeared on the horizon. The girl didn't understand what the man was doing in the garden. Still, she decided that this was her chance, whereupon she greeted her father. However, the man asked the girl what she was doing here. The girl explained that she was just enjoying the weather and also thinking. Laria suggested to her father that they hold a horse racing tournament, as it was thought to be quite exciting. And besides, it's much more fun with family members. The girl admitted that every day she has more and more memories only of people from the mansion, and she would like to change it a little. So the girl asked her father if she could go away for a while tomorrow. Laria changed her outfit, after which Evan noticed that she looked wonderful today. The girl could not believe at all that yesterday she received permission to leave, terribly you, the Duke. The girl realized that it was very suspicious, but all that was left was to go back and explain everything. Laria confessed, I would, well, that something very good happened. After which the girl inquired if Evans was going to the new library today. After which the young man gave a negative answer and explained that he was going to a meeting with the commander of the knights and added that he would start training from tomorrow. The girl hadn't expected Evan to start training so early, but the young man admitted that he actually really liked swords. Laria was mentally shocked because this indifferent boy said that he liked something. So the girl assumed that he really did like them. Laria pointed out that Evan should pick his clothes properly then. The young boy didn't really understand what the girl meant, so she explained that he should wear more modest clothes after which she held out a rack with a vest. Laria realized that it was very easy to be nice to Evan because she had seen the young man's diary before and it was like looking in the ready homework and solving the problem. The girl thought that the choice of clothes for the important event was also very important. She paid attention to the confused expression on Evan's face and realized that it explained everything. 
the girl mentally noted that the young man was really cute. Suddenly, the lady was called by the maid Lisa. The girl said goodbye to Evan, after which she went to her maid. In response, the young man asked the girl to keep herself safe. Upon arrival in the city, the girl walked through the streets and noted that one of the dresses looked very pretty, after which she asked her maid Lisa for her opinion. The girl agreed that the dress was indeed very pretty. Lisa went with the girl as an assistant and attendant, as well as two night guards. The maid asked the lady if she was going to buy this dress. The girl hesitated and decided that she was not going to get it. For two hours she had been walking through different stores and noted that the maid and the knights must be bored and tired by now. After which, she suggested going to one more place, after which she indicated that she would like to go to a candy store. The girl confessed that Evan really liked sweets, so she wanted to buy something for him. The maid and the knights were completely shocked when they heard this and also noticed that there was a huge line lined up outside the candy store. Maid Lisa explained that there were a lot of people waiting there, so they would have to wait in line for an hour. After that, she offered to tell the staff that the girl was from the Duke of Eckhart's family, because then they could get what they wanted without waiting. But the girl realized that if they do not stand in line, people will start to insult them, and the girl did not want to spoil the reputation of the Duke because of such a trifle. Laria realized that it would take some time, but decided that it was better to get in line to buy what she wanted since one dessert per person was given. Everyone should get a piece. The girl wanted to say that the ganache here is very tasty, but suddenly she was overcome by coughing again. The maid Lisa immediately became alarmed and began to try to help Lady Laria. The girl coughed and trusted the maid, thinking she was fine, then decided that she would go to the restroom. Maid Lisa volunteered to go along with the lady, but the girl insisted that even if she couldn't take it, they were sure to get at least three ganaches. Laria also realized that if Evan saw that there were only a few of them, he would definitely refuse the sweetness. So the girl decided that she should buy three so that the three of them could have a tea party. If at least one fails to buy the cake, the tea party will be disrupted because of that person. Afterward, the girl asked the maid if she really still wanted to go along with her. Only the maid wanted to object to something, as the girl immediately began to insist that if the tea party will be disrupted, the family, which had only improved relations after a joint trip to the races, will be destroyed. Because human relationships are very fragile things. Maid Lisa thought for a moment, after which the girl added that as a result, they would gradually drift apart and there would be no successors, and Duke Eckerd's clan would suffer, fading into oblivion. The girl wondered what would happen if she couldn't buy the ganache because Maid Lisa would briefly escort her to the restroom. The maid looked over with the knights and asked the mistress if she would be back soon. The girl answered in the affirmative and explained that she would be waiting at the entrance after her visit to the restroom, then headed for the ladies' room. The girl was glad that the plan had succeeded her easily, after which she began to look for one of the stores. Laria looked around to notice a dark cafe without a sign, which had only a statue of a disgusting horse on it. Suddenly the girl spotted what she was looking for. The girl pushed open the door and entered the premises, as she was immediately greeted by an unpleasant man. Laria said that she was in search of Light of Bastion. The girl then held out a photo and asked the man to tell the man that she was in the picture. The girl put the man on notice that she wanted to meet him immediately. At this time, the young boy was already present at the training session, after which the man approached him and greeted him. The man introduced himself with the name Ludwig de Cardio and added that he was the commander of the Knights of the Eckard family. But the young man already knew this, after which he informed him that he was glad to meet him. The man also knew about Evan, for he had won first place in the youth fencing competition. But that was no surprise from the heir of the Eckerd family. The man warned the young man that he should put in a lot of effort in the future. The young man realized that as the heir of the Ducal family, effort was a common thing for him, so it was not appropriate for the knight commander to be so rude. The young man decided that he should put him in his place. Only the young man wanted to say something when suddenly the man said that the Duchess died because of him. The man said that before he was born, Duke Eckard's residence was a bright and warm place. However, after the Duchess gave birth to Evan, she died due to poor health, and then the Duke became unhappy. The man approached the young man and said that if only Matilda was alive, it would all be different. 
So the man decided that the young man had no right to happiness at all, for he was the one who had made the Duke know loneliness. The young man thought about the fact that actually, when Laria picked out clothes for him, he felt a little better. After all, his father picked out his own clothes every day and always ate breakfast alone. The man said that fortunately there was nothing better than fencing, as it was a distraction and a way to train the body. So he told the young man that from tomorrow they would come here after breakfast and train until the evening. The young man only replied that he understood. The man also warned Evan that he must work hard to hone his skills and become the pride of the Duke. That is all he should be doing. He then placed his hand on the young man's shoulder and asked him if he wanted to atone for his mother's death. The man approached the young man and told him that he would spend his life in the shadow of the Duke. The man really wanted Evan to be as miserable as the Duke. The girl entered the store and was surprised that the counter was such a large room. The man put the girl up that the man she was looking for was waiting for her upstairs. Whereupon she began to climb the stairs and finally met him. In front of the girl of the city sat the head of the dark guild under the name of Bastion that has any information. The man was glad to see the girl and said that he had heard that she knew his real name. The man out of decency wanted to introduce himself as suddenly a cat jumped into the girl's lap. The man was rather surprised. The girl informed him that she didn't have much time, so she would be brief. The girl held out her winning coupon and asked him to leave her 10 gold pieces and to dispose of the rest at his discretion. But it would be necessary to fulfill three of her conditions. The man listened attentively to the girl. Laria said that first, she would like to buy a title, and secondly, she needed an estate. The girl remembered that originally the main character's winnings had already been divided, so she planned to follow her actions in the novel. After that, the girl clarified that she needed to do everything very quietly. After all, Duke Icard must never find out about it. The man thought about the title and said that the young lady was still too young. The girl was not surprised, because, as expected, the information guild he already knows her age. Then it occurred to the girl to create a new identity with fictitious data. Laria explained that she wanted the mansion to be located in Hanyu. She also explained that she didn't have enough money to buy the whole earth, so she asked to just buy half of it. The man explained that it was a relatively cheap area because it was far away from the capital and had no advantages, but it was almost all sold out. The girl realized that since Hugh had huge reserves of iron ore, land prices would increase manifold once the deposits were discovered. Seymour could only get half the amount because of her, so she wouldn't be able to buy the entire land. Therefore, the girl wouldn't even be able to buy a normal title, so she decided that she would start as a baron. Mentally, the girl apologized to Seymour and said that if he is a real protagonist, he will be able to overcome this challenge. The girl was brought out of her musings by the voice of the guild leader. Laria realized that she had gone too far into the role of a villain, not noticing anything around her. The man offered to finish the terms and asked what the girl's last request was. Laria explained that it was precisely for her sake that she had come. After all, it was much more important than the first two. Third, the girl explained that Duke Eckhard would soon be looking for a doctor, and she wanted the doctor to be her own man. The girl understood that no doubt the guild leader was capable of finding the most outstanding person, but she wanted him to be from his guild as well. The girl knew that there was a similar scam in the original, because Duke Eckhard constantly called for a doctor to check her condition. Therefore, the girl decided that it was necessary to take care of such an important detail as the bribed doctor now in order to precisely match the moment when she would need to die. Laria explained to the guild's guildmaster that if a member of Bastion would help her, it would become easier to pull off future messes. The man listened to the girl and informed her that he understood. He also informed her that he would find a woman if he could, because he had someone suitable in mind. The girl didn't know if she had the right to choose, but she decided to trust the head of the guild anyway. The man explained that Serena Marista was a fake name that her doctor would have, so the girl would know immediately when she heard the name. Laria realized that time was short, so she only told only the most important things, but at the same time, the guild head had already gotten into the whole situation. The girl remembered that in the novel, the Bastion Guild is known for its secrecy, and even if the Duke tries to get information about Simori or find out something about the princess, they would do everything possible to protect their client's secret.
Suddenly, the girl noticed that the guild leader wasn't even listening to what she was saying, just looking at her cat. But still, she was glad that they had dealt with her problem so quickly. So the girl decided to let his cat stare at him as long as he wanted. In the end, the girl thanked the head of the guild. The man said it was a great deal, so there was nothing left for him to do but accept it. The man agreed to dispose of the check just like the girl said. Afterward, the man held out a coupon for a table of gold pieces. Laria was surprised, for she had asked to keep only 10. The man explained that the rest of the amount was payment for their future transaction. The girl did not understand what the man wanted from her. Then the man asked what the man running the guild wanted, that they were running the information, namely information. Laria warned in advance that she knew nothing about the Duke. She also added that he doesn't tell her anything at all. Well, actually, she explained that it's not what he needs. The head of the guild doesn't want information about Duke Eckard. He wants information about Laria Rose Eckard. The girl was greatly surprised to hear that the guild head wanted information about her. The girl realized that she could only tell him a little about herself, but to continue working with them, she would have to tell him everything she knows. The girl doesn't think the guild leader didn't know that. Laria decided that there was no choice, so she agreed. But in doing so, she informed him that she wanted something in return. She explained that the price of information about her was equal information about someone else, after which she informed the head of the guild that he could ask. The girl reflected on the fact that this was not in the original, after which informed that she wanted to know about her lost mother. Duke Eckard only told part of the story, but she doesn't know the rest. The man told her that, as in the girl's case, the Duke was given a wedding, but he had a good heart, so their relationship was wonderful. The girl was slightly surprised when she heard this information. It was hard for her to imagine that Duke Eckard was close to anyone. The man continued the story and said that Matilda was charming. She was kind and soft-hearted, so everyone loved her. She especially liked the Duke's sense of humor, so she always laughed when she was around him. The girl was surprised that Matilda really liked the Duke's sense of humor and decided that this was true love. The man continued the story and said that even then, Duke Eckard spent all his time with his wife and hardly participated in political life. The girl was surprised that even a Duke could be like that. After which, the man added that it was also known that he loved her madly, worried whenever his wife was not around. Therefore, Matilda always had to be in sight. Whatever she did, he did not allow her to go out with other men. The man said that one day, Matilda happened to go into town with the vice commander of the knights. The girl wondered, if it was the commander then, it was the commander of the knights squad now. The man revealed that his name is Ludwig, wearing a blue uniform. This is his nickname because he always wears a blue uniform. The man explained that the blue uniform of the Eckerd Knights is a bit dark, so no one wears it but him. Some even whisper about his strange taste. They say it's because Matilda's eyes were blue in color, but no one is sure. The man believed that many people loved Matilda, so his behavior is understandable. The man said that she had always had poor health, but it got even worse when she got pregnant with Evan. The guild leader added that that's why Duke was constantly worried about her during her pregnancy, but she passed away during childbirth. The girl realized that Evan would be very hurt if he heard such a thing. Still, she figured he had figured it out long ago. Suddenly, the guild leader asked Miss Laria to be careful. The girl wondered why the man was saying that. The man explained that it was because Sir Evan is an exact copy of the Duke. The girl couldn't help but agree that they really are like two drops of water. The man turned to the girl and asked if her interest had been quenched, to which the girl replied that more or less. The man then inquired if he could ask her something. The guild leader wanted to know what the girl thought of Duke Eckhart. Laria realized that she could pretend like she really liked him and that she didn't understand anything. But at the same time, Sven is the head of the Bastion Guild, so she has to get him on her side no matter what. So the girl decided that she should answer carefully and said that the Duke would be quite capable of influencing and even controlling the Imperial family in the future. The man was slightly surprised by these words. From his reaction, the girl realized that she seemed to have answered perfectly. By the time the girl returned, Maid Lisa and the knights were already able to take the ganaches. Suddenly, the girl held out a bouquet of roses to the maid. Laria was worried because they had been waiting in line for a very long time, so she decided to thank them. But they didn't have the reaction the girl expected, so she thought they didn't like the flowers. 
Suddenly, the maid noticed that Miss was holding some kind of box in her hands and asked what it was. But the girl was in no hurry to tell and simply explained that it was a secret. At this time, the Duke sat in his study and contemplated the fact that he had already sorted out everything about Laria becoming his daughter-in-law. But for a while, he was even able to avoid Duke Orlando's suspicion. The man realized that it was too early to confront him. After all, they are ready to go head to head, so the Duke should not relax. The man realized that to keep the Imperial Palace in check, there was no other way. Therefore, the only way to keep the Imperial family in line was to gain control of Princess Alani. The Duke decided that the only way out was to build up more power while Laria remained Evan's wife, and then make Alani Evan's second wife after destroying the enemy. Besides, the man knew the girl didn't have long to live. The man thought about it and decided that Lisa under Laria had reported coughing up blood on a regular basis. Yes, and had seen it himself more than once. The man realized that the girl was trying to hide it because she didn't want to be an inconvenience. The man understood that the girl was a very pure and bright child because she even understood his subtle sense of humor. The man thought about it and realized that he then made his first joke since she died. Suddenly it hit the man and he realized that he had originally only taken the girl to be Evan's wife, but she had won a considerable amount of money thanks to the bet, so the man decided he should be more careful with her. At this moment, just the girl entered her father's office, after which she asked if he was busy. The man gave a negative answer. Then the girl asked if he wanted to have tea with her, to which the man agreed. Laria said that they bought a very tasty ganache, and also added that Lisa and the accompanying knights stood in line for so long because of him. The girl admitted that she wanted the three of them to eat, but Evan refused, because he had practice. Although the girl expected him to rush over because he loved him so much. The man tasted a bite and realized that it was really quite good. The man asked the girl if she was really leaving just to buy it. The girl explained that she just wanted to have a family tea party and actually wanted to give the Duke some book. Laria held out a book called Becoming a Family and explained that she won the money because she was lucky, so she wanted to buy gifts for the family with the money. The girl noticed that Evan really liked the money, despite the Duke's workplace, and she assumed that he liked it too. The girl revealed that this was the latest edition. She assumed that because of her luck, she was able to buy the last copy. Suddenly, the Duke inquired if the book had a son in it. The girl was surprised at first, but then realized that the Duke was joking again. The girl began to laugh as she was suddenly overcome by a cough again, whereupon the man asked the girl to call Lisa. The maid reported to the Duke that the girl had looked through many things, including dresses and jewelry, but had not found what she wanted to buy. The girl also added that she had bought a limited edition ganache for their family tea party. After all, the lady said that Mr. Evan loves sweets. The girl also added that while they were standing in line, the lady excused herself and came back with a box with the bookstore symbol on it, and that was it. The man listened to the girl and informed her that she could go then. Suddenly, the girl came to her senses and remembered that the owner had told her to find the doctor and wondered if she should start looking already. The man only replied that the girl could do as she knew how. The man asked the maid Lisa to do a favor and buy everything the girl touched. The man wondered if she had been given so little money since she had only looked but not bought anything. The man did not understand how she could cast such a shadow on the reputation of the Eckhart family and then asked her to be sure to buy more things similar to the one she had touched while the maid was in town. When the maid left, the man looked again at that card the girl had recently given him. Laria realized she was very exhausted and laid down in bed, all because the trip had taken her all morning and afternoon, so the girl even had to secretly take some Oclazia fruit with her to eat on the road. The girl was thinking about how nice it was for her to lie around when suddenly Evan entered the room. The girl asked the young man why he had come in so late. Evan was a little surprised that Laria was waiting for him. The girl explained that she couldn't sleep without him. Suddenly, the young man said that from now on, she no longer had to wait for him because he might come late and they would also not be able to have breakfast together. The girl asked the young man if he would leave as soon as he woke up to which the boy gave an affirmative answer. The girl assumed that Evan wanted to take over the world with a sword. She didn't understand why he had such intense training during such a peaceful time, but she still took it for granted. 
She realized that meant they wouldn't be able to see each other much anymore.